Quiet in the studio? Let's roll. Well, mm. good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What? Shh, shh. Stop being unprofessional. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is AbFab, and we are going to be talking about ethnicity. And it is part eight, the final part, preserving our indigenous identity and culture. Now, we have Gazelle here. Say quickly, hello, Gazelle. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our special. Okay. Stats, say hello, sir. Hello to all our lovely listeners out there. Okay, and uh, we have to. The Raven. Go ahead, Raven. Good evening, listeners. Hope you're having a good week so far. Hope we can enlighten you with some of our tremendous wisdom for this evening. Okay, how did we get from July to December in just one little introduction with him? Unbelievable. (laughs) Unbelievable. Okay, so, preserving our indigenous identity and culture, final part, part eight, ethnicity. So, just to kick this off, because I know Stats has got a lot of things to say about this, England is a relatively homogenous country which has been dominated by white English majority for over a thousand years. But after several decades of mass immigration and the constant attacks from anti-white, race-obsessed ideologues, our ethnic identity is under serious attack. Stats, go ahead. I think first we should uh, tackle this uh, Anglo-Saxons don't exist myth that we've been hearing recently. Oh, yeah. Because that's just not a cod's bollop, isn't it? You've got ancient skeletons who were carbon dated, proving they were from the Anglo-Saxon era around 500, 700 AD. So I'm just not having that at all. We know from various sources that the Anglo-Saxons were the only conquering force to substantially alter the country's genetic makeup. I'd say the average Englishman, probably roughly about 40% Anglo-Saxon DNA, getting slightly weaker as you go north and west. And the other 60% is classed as European. But if you look at it in the bigger picture, all Northwestern European DNA comes from the beaker culture of the Lower Rhine, who mixed with people from the East and then migrated North and West. So it's all European DNA, really, if you think about it. And to say that there's no such thing as the Anglo-Saxons is either a complete lie or stupidity and just disregards all of the data available. Like the gender argument, it's a non-argument, to be honest. Okay. All right. Steve, go ahead. I know you don't want to hear this. I'm going to mention this very briefly. But the name England comes from the Engels who invaded from 5th century Germanica. So Mark is is quite right. And obviously I'm descended from the Engels, hence Ingram, Engelram, etc. Now, the fact of the matter is um, I'm getting a little bit tired. I mean, Mark has made some very good points there about the fact that our indigenous heritage, white Christian heritage, is being completely undermined. And I have a massive issue, actually. I won't go on too much about this because I know we want to all interact on this, but I have a massive issue with the fact that children in our education system are being made to feel ashamed of their background, their heritage, because of their white Christian heritage. I find that absolutely appalling. Even the church are doing it as well. They're teaching it in schools. You know, they have a pyramid basically showing white guilt. They should be totally and utterly ashamed of themselves. Sorry, Steve. I'm sorry to interject there. Carry on. Yeah, I I think what we should do on this program, I'm very serious about this because I think this is a very serious matter, and I think we should do perhaps four, five, or six specials on this by researching the education system and what specifically is being taught within the county of Cheshire so that we um, protect the young people from being ashamed and uh, being I've made to are. feel guilty yeah. about their white Christian heritage. Now, very quickly, one quick point. In certain parts of Cheshire, I always go around, I see the little churches with the English flag. I don't believe that you will see certain things taught in some areas of Cheshire, whilst in other areas, such as housing estates and other poorer areas, these things are promoted. Oh, they'll I, I try think it there on, is yeah. a differential between what's being taught, and I think that's something we should look at. Please yield to the man who is the gazelle. Go ahead, Gaz. Yeah, on an absolute tangent, just to take it in another direction, we've got Engelbert Humperdinck at the bottom <laughs> of the screen, 
and we're actually on about changing the makeup of the country. Yeah. Well, I know for a fact that Steve's had four shades of eyeshadow on this week. <laughs> And he wants to take it into a serious issue. Well, that's a serious issue. Oh, it's the lighting in his room. That's the truth. I go. Right, okay. Well, listen, should we be taken into account, even though it's been a predominantly white English majority, which has done all the shaping of the cultural and ethnic landscapes, should we recognise that even within that majority there is a genetic diversity due to historical migrations, interactions and intermixing with other populations. Because remember, we were talking about Angles. We were talking about Germans. We also had the Romans here. Okay, Mark, The Romans didn't really leave any impression at all. They didn't. They didn't mix, no. Well, why did, why did Monty Ooh. Python turn around and say, what did the Romans ever do for us? Come they on. built stuff, but oh, they did. They did build some. The Anglo Saxons are the only ones who left a major, major right. change on the DNA. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say something in relation to what you've brought up there about um, uh, different cultures, etc. Now, we have seen a swathe of uncontrolled mass immigration, which was deliberate on the part of the left. 20, 30 years ago, that's when it all started, predominantly. Uh, you can go back, you know, maybe 50 years, 60 years before that and, and, and certain other periods, but the, 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 the massive swathe of immigration has taken place during the past 30 years or so, and it is changing the demographic. Now, nobody has an issue with recognising and respecting other cultures at all, but going back to what you said, Jonathan, that we do have a predominant white Christian heritage in this country well, it's going still back around years and that is actually representative of the majority in the country hold on a second but, according to the census the fact of the hold matter on, is hold on we're hold now on. seeing minority right muted okay according to the census it's still 84 percent go ahead now dictate to the majority exactly what's going on and that is wrong we're seeing our own heritage undermined and our own indigenous identity being eradicated through policy making and education drunk okay go ahead mark i agree about respecting other cultures but not at the detriment of our own correct so you mentioned demographics where we can see the effect so we look at the census 2021 I mean, yeah probably rough figures aren't they but you had fewer people identify as at least one uk nationality that was down by two percent the biggest one for me was the number of people identifying as English. That was down from 57.7% to 14.9%. That's very sad indeed. Now, there could be a couple of reasons for this. I believe they moved British to above English on the list to the top. Or I believe maybe our identity and customs have been consumed by Britishness. It, it became to mean the same thing. Other nations in the UK, like Scotland, Wales and etc. They still held their ethnic ethnic identity and they could distance themselves from being British whenever they wished. But English and British were just used interchangeably. I think when the dominant power in a kingdom, it probably usually adopts the collective identity more than others. But it's really sad to see that that's gone down massively. It's a shame, really. Okay, go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, I mean, we've actually become a, a minority in our own country. I mean, not yet in the whole country, but we've actually got three cities now Yeah, where the white indigenous are the minority. Yeah. Okay, quick one from Steve. Go on. Yeah, I just want to say, really, you know, um, part of the problem is that we've had certain elements of, of some political parties uh, portray uh, Englishness or people who identify as English as being racist. And that has to stop. That is a very serious matter. Uh, other nations can uh, proudly denounce, you know, announce themselves as Scottish or Welsh or whatever. And the fact that uh, if people are being made to feel very uncomfortable for whatever reason, whether uh, they're trying to attach racism as a label to the English identity, I think that needs to stop. And people need to be called out on that publicly, whoever they are. Go ahead, yeah. Mark. It's not about attacking other people's ethnicity because that's not on. It's about preserving our own. Trevor mentioned then about the cities. He's right, 37% of London. I've written Lund on him in my notes. <laughs> Lund uh, Yeah, Lund on. That's my new name. Well, yeah, it. Uh, actually, it, actually, that's quite, quite apt. 
Yeah, 37% white British. That's not English. So the number of ethnically English people will be a lot lower. But then to the detriment of ours, yeah, it is. Other ethnic groups have risen. Africans from 1.8% to 25 Muslims from 4.9% to 6.5 and Hindus from one5 to one7 The population in a decade has risen more than 3.5 million. But if you look at it, the people who identify as the homogenous group have gone down. The people who identify as white, that, that went down. So that means we're actually losing white people and getting people of other races into the country. Okay, so you've moved us on to something else. Now, is there such a thing as anti-white hatred? Yes, I do believe there is, and I think it's been promoted through some of our establishments, actually, and, and uh, our uh, some of our political parties. Um, I find it appalling that it's going on. I really do. I, I think um, there is nothing more shameful, and I come back to the same issue because I think this is very big. I think it's something we really, really need to pursue as a topic on this show, which is the fact that the education system uh, is being used to... Uh, affect the mental well-being and make young people feel ashamed of their indigenous identity. Nothing could be worse in a country than that. Go ahead, Mark. It really is bad. I mean, there's no there's no excuse for anti-blackness or anti-Asian or anti-anything. So why yeah. the anti-white? You go online, you'll find masses of non-whites calling for the death or extermination of whites, kill whitey hashtags and things like that, etc. That's never dealt with by the be-kind lefties. You've got videos of whites being beaten, robbed, killed by non-whites yet again silence from the be kind crew and no riots and looting for weeks on end it's, yeah. it's really not good yeah. but this anti-white thing comes from which I think you're about to touch on things like unconscious bias and critical race theory yeah. isn't it yeah indeed indeed I was just about to say that unconscious bias refers to biases that people hold without being consciously aware of them and that can also influence attitudes behaviors and decision making and I look at some of the things that are going on where I see a lot of um, situations, not only in America, but over here, where blacks are absolutely, totally and utterly taking advantage of their numbers and beating up whites or attacking them or robbing from the shops. You know, in a, it, they just go in and they just do it like it's almost as if it's their right. Go ahead, Stats. We've tried to eradicate racism, and this is just regressive and taking it back there, just in a different form. I mean, th th these nonsensical theories that assume we are inherently racist are just that, nonsensical. Look at unconscious bias. I don't think thoughts no. always manifest into behavior, do they? No. But if you don't know you're having a thought, how can you control it? Mm -hmm. How do you know which action was conscious or unconscious? Yeah. It's absolute nonsense. Yeah. Same with critical race theory, John. It's just absolute well, Moronic. critical race theory, it's, an, it's basically an academic framework yeah. that examines how race and racism intersect with power structures in society. So, for it's example, easy and convenient labeling for a left-wing agenda. Oh, yeah. yeah, without a shadow, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, so that's why on the TV you would think, if you look at all the adverts, every family in this country is an interracial family. And they have to have so many different people of different races within the adverts now. How could you have, I, I'm beginning to, I mean, I'm sounding stupid when I say this, but if you have an interracial family that's got a Chinese kid, you know, I mean, what, what, what the hell is going on there? Go ahead, Mark. Again, this stuff's come from abroad. This has come from America. This idea that racism, racism is baked into all systems of American society is now here. And it doesn't matter what white people do to combat it. That's just seen as white people trying to secure their power. They, yeah. they believe all the systems are designed to benefit white people. It doesn't belong in our country. It's more imported horse crap, and I'm sick of it. And it makes a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah, I think that's, they do well, that's John, one of the main the American things. Constitution, actually, and see that the creation of America was that had nothing to do with skin colour. It was about everyone being equal under the law. Yeah. Where did they get that from? The English. The English. Because right, exactly. we, we fall I mean, you, for you, you've it. You've got in, in the trading system, I mean, I mean, history doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes. Yeah. And I can't wait for this to turn around because yeah. it will turn around. Might not be an hour lifetime, but it will turn around. But how are we going to ensure in a way that 
conducts dialogue with all the different races to get across to them, look, we are the majority. We're not looking to suppress you. We fought for your freedoms. We, we shed so many different lives. You know, Some of them people actually fought with us for their own yeah, freedoms. for their own freedoms. I mean, how many lives were lost in actually doing it? And how much public money was spent in actually trying to do that? And what are we there for? Are we there to be, you know, sort of suppressed? Because that's how it feels. That's the perception. Go ahead, Steve. Well, I'd just like to say something that some people out there that are easily offended uh, might, um, you know, question. But, you know, without sounding flippant about this in any capacity, um, how many people actually feel comfortable with expressing the following openly this is? You know, I, I, I'm i going to describe myself exactly how I am, not how I identify as, because that's different. Exactly how I am. And I'm a white male, heterosexual, married, Christian man, English, born in this country, and I believe in our heritage. And there is no real... Uh, room for people expressing that or being allowed to express that openly in our country anymore without being attacked. Yeah. And I'm sick to That's death true. of it because That's true. why should anybody in their own country feel oppressed because of who they are within their own country? That's what we've got going on. It just goes to show when within LGBTIQ+, plus, where's the heterosexual? In well, there. I've said this many times. I think, where is you it? know this is supposed to be an all-inclusive organisation, but where is the H? We sound a little bit flippant about this, perhaps, or you know, casual. Yep. But the fact of the matter is, it is not there. That's right. Go ahead, stats. Go ahead. Sorry, Raven, but you've just scored zero diversity points. Correct your identity. You're Sorry. going to get nowhere well, with Stonewall. You're probably right, Mark. I don't. I don't tick all the boxes uh, of acceptance in my own country. You're probably right. The church think you're at the top of the pyramid, but in fact. Yeah. I think you might be at the bottom, mate. Correct. Yeah. So are we looking for some solutions or some yeah, ways let's, of fixing this? You know, how are we going to do it? I mean, because there's only two ways that something can come out. It's either by negotiation or it turns out to be a fight. Okay. Well, no, I don't think negotiation comes into it because I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to live my life in accordance with who I am, in accordance with my indigenous heritage and i will stand by my beliefs as being a white male heterosexual married christian man and that's it that's it i if go people with don't that. like that then that's their problem end off yeah there you go go ahead stats first thing we've got to control immigration yeah and to do that we've got to change politics i think we've also got to make it financially beneficial for people to have more children yep. not make it harder for them yep. maybe that way we'll get the birth rate back up and we can sustain our culture I think the different nations of the UK need to be celebrated in education and a resurgence of Englishness is really needed desperately. We've got to promote... I've got help. an ad- Oh, sorry, Stan. No, you're right. Go on. Sorry, mate. Sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm just being flippant sure? again. I, I've got an idea of getting the birth rate up, but I need Sunday off. <laughs> just Sunday. <laughs> sorry, Stan. I think, yeah. We've got to promote the values of each country in the UK, not generic made-up British values, which now basically means multiculturalism. That's not what it's meant to be. It doesn't work. No. Multiculturalism um, doesn't work. No, it doesn't. I think you need to respect the host culture. I think all foreign dangerous ideologies that poison the minds of our children, which is what Steve mentioned before, need to be banned from education immediately. Back to evidence-based learning. And then when we're on the subject of this anti-white racism, that should be dealt with on an equal footing with other racism directed at other races in fact maybe a, ru- a move away from race would be ideal especially in edu- education because what does race actually mean well color of skin well no everyone's different no one's actually white are they no one's actually black all people have different shades of color so to take offense at, 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 and dish out race based on things that don't exist it's just insanity again yeah well, I, can, I, can I, can, can, I understand no where you're black. coming no one's from actually white are they no, I understand exactly where it you're coming from. It makes a lot of grifters a lot of money. Well, that's the thing. There is always somebody there to take advantage of what's going on. Yeah. And you've only got to follow the money to find out. And that's the thing it. is, John, I grew up with people who weren't 
the same colour skin as me, and it, it was it was very rarely discussed. In my school, when I grew up in America, I was like one of the only white kids in the classes. It's as simple as that, and it was like spot the white kid, and there was only a few of us in there, and we were with Chicanas, Itais, Chinks, that's what they called them, Chinese, they called them Chinks in those days, and it, quite literally, you know, oh, that was me just knocking my microphone then, quite literally, nobody worried about those things in those days. Did you feel like a domino? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, my girl, my first girlfriend was a spick, <laughs> Spanish, Spanish girl. You know, I, I'm glad you clarified. I'm glad you clarified. That. Yeah. You know, no, there won't be there won't be any cuts on any of that. There won't be any edits because that's what they were called. That was the terms that was utilized in the '60s in America. It's and, still like that in American prisons, mate. Yeah. And still segregate themselves by gangs and race. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Why can't they all just get along? Yeah, well, and dragging this out, making it worse. And I mixed with the with all the blacks. They were my best friends, some of them. There was no no two ways about that. So not my friends. <laughs> give it up. <laughs> not at the moment. Go ahead. Go ahead, Raven. I was just going to say, you make some interesting points here in terms of the fact that, you know, this endless portrayal of racism today, um, you know, we've discussed this before, doesn't really happen in my view. I don't hear it um, uh, on a day-to-day basis. I don't really hear racism at all, if I'm honest, um, it, as I go about my business with who I associate with. But the fact of the matter is this. There is nothing wrong with people all over the world being proud of their indigenous heritage, Correct. their indigenous country, and actually taking some massive pride in that. And there is nothing wrong with everybody around the world wanting to protect their indigenous country and heritage Indeed. and traditions and values and identity at all. In fact, that is what kills, in my view, racism off because it allows everybody to be who they want to be in, and who they are without f- fear of, of doing so. Now, but within the culture, within the culture, the world. hold on, Steve, within the culture of the host country. That's right. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, Stats. Steve made a great point there. We don't hear about it. And the reason we're hearing about it is because these grifters need it to make money. Yeah. If there's no racism, these people won't make a penny. And it's yeah. the only thing they can do. They well, give nothing to society apart from moan, whine. And cause and problems and division. Yeah, and moan about problems that were in the past that affected people. Not them. They've not been affected by it. They've got the best chance. That some of these people live in the, the top countries in the world to get the chance in life. I witnessed a grift. I witnessed a, an experiment with black ants and red ants. And they put two of them in a jar. And it wasn't until... Not just one, sorry. They put put red ants and black ants in the jar. And they just sat it down. And they were just going about their business and looking around and checking everything out. And then they lifted up the jar and they shook it. And the red ants were like sort of flying against the black ants and the black ants were flying against the red ants and they started fighting. And, it shows and that's exactly how our society works with Correct. these people you refer to as grifters, a phrase I'm not familiar with, by the way, but I'm guess, guessing what it means. Race the grifters. Fact, yeah. yeah, and the, the fact and of race the matter is we've got all sorts of people in highly paid uh, causing problems. And organizations who are doing nothing other than what Mark is, is suggesting, is, which is causing trouble and problems in society that by and large are not there. Correct. Correct. I went to see the Grifter Steve one night. It was brilliant. Saturday night at the movies. <laughs> Who cares? What All right, I'm calling it there. As soon as he did that, that's it. I'm calling it there. All right, there you go. Right, okay. Well, in that case, then, that's the end of that series of specials about preserving our indigenous cultures and all the rest of it. Thanks very much to Stats for providing the backgrounds on some of those things. Thanks very much for me for marvelously hosting those events. Uh, no thanks to Raven. Okay, a little bit to uh, the Gazelle. A bit more than the Raven. <laughs> I'm used to this. I really don't care, to be quite frank. I am my own man. I'd prefer to be a rebel on my own without a cause. And um... <laughs> Without a clause. Not a cause. A clause. <laughs> Go ahead, Stats, man. What to were you going to say? To be quite frank, uh, I really don't care. I'm happy being the rebel on the show. It's great. 
I don't go along toe the line with everything that goes. Okay, stats, go ahead. <laughs> That's him gone. I was finished with like, all these attacks. A quick summary because all these attacks we've been witnessing are for the purpose of dismantling our indigenous identity. Yeah. This constant de anglicization of our culture is no myth. We've literally covered this now in seven different areas and institutions that are under attack. We've shown how and by who, and we've discussed what's needed. I think we've progressed over a thousand years here, and to secure more progression, it's vital that people change our weak and pathetic leadership and instill proudness and celebrate all the good. The English are given to the world. Give the people their identity back and society will reap the benefits that we've done in the past. Correct. We're seeing, on a positive note, we're seeing a fight back begin in all areas like art, media and politics. Let's be positive going forward and defeat this regressive enemy so we can leave a secure and prosperous society for the next generations. Let's protect the young people in the education system from traitors operating in this country. Okay, there you go. All right. Oh, good and intentions. All listening. Yeah. So, say good night, everybody. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Goodbye. <laughs> Cheerio. Bye, Raven. Sayonara. Have oh. you the same? Cuck off. Bye, Stats. Ta da! Bye, landlord! <laughs> <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs>